In this video, we're going to cover 20 Microsoft Excel tips. Let's take a look at headers, specifically colors and fonts. Here I've got a spreadsheet and right here, there's a little paint can. I can change the color of the header and then I can change the color of the font. I could also bold it if I wanted. You can make a great looking header instantly. You can change your column width pretty easily. You can select your column, simply drag your mouse along, and then in between the two letters, so the C and the D for example, you'll see the cursor changes from an arrow into a little cross, and you can change the width. It'll tell you exactly how wide it's going. It will actually change every column that you've selected to that exact width. You can also easily force the width of a column as well. Simply select the columns, and then in between the letters, just double click and it will go to the maximum width of each individual text inside that column. If you'd like to get rid of everything or change something, you can select everything pretty easily. If you'd like to select all of the columns, simply go up here to A and just drag your mouse along and you'll select all the data in each column. Same thing for the rows. If I start on row two, for example, I can simply drag my cursor down and that will select all the rows, all the data inside those rows. If you'd like to simply delete everything and select it all, simply click in between the A and the 1. There's this little button right there that highlights every row and every column. Hit the delete key and it's all gone, except for the formatting. You can filter data by color. It's pretty simple. Here is my table. I'm going to go to the top with my headers. I'm going to go to data and then click the filter button. Now normally that means I can now select my filters. I could select just the DC or I could select just the Marvel, for example. If I want to select all of it, I'll simply select all, click OK. Now if I'm highlighting something, so for example, I'm going to pick Captain America here and I'm going to highlight him yellow. I'm also going to select DC Comics and select them yellow. Now when I go to filter, I click on the filter button and you'll see there's a filter by color option now that's come up and I can filter now and this lets me filter everything that I've highlighted. If you're setting up multiple tabs, you can reorder them fairly easily. Here at the bottom, I've got my multiple tabs set up. 1974, I want to move that to the beginning. So you simply click on the tab and then move it by dragging it over. And now the tab 1974 is at the left hand side. You can change the color of your tabs pretty easily as well. I'm going to make my 2005 tab a different color. I'm going to select the tab, then I'm going to right click I'm going to go to tab color and I can make the tab color whatever color I would like. You'll see now it shows up as 2005, blue, 1989, tab color, yellow, 1983, tab color, orange. If you're working in multiple tabs, sometimes they're too skinny. It's pretty easy to change how wide you'd like to make the tab. In this case, I'm going to make the 2005 tab wider. I'm going to double click inside the tab. And then I'm simply going to go to the beginning of the 2005 text. I'm going to hit the space bar five times. One, two, three, four, five. Go to the end of the 2005. One, two, three, four, five on the space bar. Hit enter. And now my tab is wider. You can merge and center cells inside of Excel. Here's an example. I have the words comic book inventory at the top of my table, but it leaks out from cell B2 into cell C2. So what you can do is just simply highlight all the cells that you'd like to make one cell and then in, under the home button there's a merge and center option right here. When I click merge and center it now makes this one group of four cells into one. I can then update it as if it's one cell. Sometimes you need to wrap text inside of Excel. Here's an example. I'm in cell F10 and my description of my comic book is too wide for the cell. I'd like it to wrap. And so I'm going to simply click the cell F10 in this example. And then here at the top under the home tab, there's a wrap text button. When I click it, it's going to wrap the text so it stays inside that cell. There's another way you can do it as well. If the button's not at the top, simply click on the cell and then right click format cells and then inside format cells, you can go to alignment, wrap text. You can then select OK and it's the same deal. It'll wrap the text. If you just need to add up some numbers very quickly, it's pretty easy to do. You'll see here on the left hand side, I've got quantity of comic books. I'm simply going to select B16 in this case, which is underneath all the quantity. And then over on the right hand side under the home tab, there's an auto sum feature. When I click on it, it's going to instantly gather up all the data and I'm going to simply hit enter and that will sum up the numbers. If you don't want to add everything up, if you just want to add up some of them, click what you'd like to have added, then click auto sum and underneath it, 
it will add up just those numbers. You can see here in this case, it's only adding B10 through B15 and not all of it together. If you use the same spreadsheets over and over again, you can actually pin these. So I'm gonna go up here to File, and I'm going to see all of my recent spreadsheets come up. If you're gonna use the same spreadsheet again and again, so let's say, for example, my comic book collection is sitting here, I can actually pin this. There's a little pin button right there, and now what'll happen is when I go to Pinned, you'll see it now sits here forever. You can also unpin it. Simply hover over the pin, and you'll see it says Unpin this item from the list. Quick little bonus tip, some of these templates at the top aren't very useful. You can actually click this drop down button and you can hide them. So you can just use recent or pinned depending on what you'd like to see. You may have a command that you'd like to use repeatedly, but it's not on the main menu page. Well, you can add this up to the quick ribbon up in the top left. Here's how you add something to the quick ribbon. I'm gonna go to file, down at the bottom left there's options. Inside of Excel options, I'm gonna look for quick access toolbar. On the left-hand side is everything that you can add. Now I've got it subsetted here under popular commands, but you could do all commands or macros. I'm just gonna leave it on popular commands, and I'm gonna scroll on down until I find quick print. There's quick print right there, and I'm gonna move this over now into my quick access toolbar. You'll see the save, undo, and redo are all sitting up here. Save, undo, redo. When I click OK, the quick print is now added right there. So I could click it and in one click I could quickly print to whatever my default printer is that's set up. There's a very easy way to copy formatting. What you can do is select whatever cell you'd like to copy the formatting from and then look for this little Format Painter button. It's right here. I'm going to click on Format Painter and then I can simply brush over whatever cells I would like to change that formatting to. It works for colors, it works for font sizes. It's a pretty useful tool. Sorting is actually pretty straightforward. It doesn't need to be intimidating. Here I've got my table. I'd like to sort it by title. So I'm gonna simply select everything in the table. I'm gonna go up here to the top to data. I'm gonna select sort. And then it's gonna ask me a very important question. My data has headers or my data does not have headers. If my data has headers, and that it does because I've got quantity, publisher, title, and so on. My data does have headers. I can then select sort by and I can simply select whatever header I would like to sort by, in this case, title. I'm then going to go either A to Z or Z to A. I'm gonna go A to Z, I'm gonna select OK, and now it sorts everything by the title, B, C, D, all the way down to W. Sometimes you need to paste something without the formatting. So in this case, I'm gonna copy the Marvel, Spider-Man, 455, and 966. I'm gonna do copy, and then Underneath it, I'm going to paste, but in this case, I'm gonna not just hit the paste button because that's gonna paste everything. What I'm gonna do instead is go paste, and then you can see here there's paste special down at the bottom. Now you can hover over these different values to see if there's one that you like, or you can go to paste special, you can pick different pasting. So in this case, I'm gonna pick formulas, I'm gonna click OK, and it will simply just paste over the text that's there. You can dramatically zoom in and out in Excel, and this is really helpful if you're on a conference call and you're sharing your screen. All you need to do is hold down the control key and then use the mouse wheel. I'm scrolling down in the mouse wheel, and now I'm scrolling up in the mouse wheel. So a lot of times you're sitting in a call and you're looking at a really rinky-dink font. Have that person hit that control button, scroll up so you can see what the heck they're looking at on their screen. There's text and there's numbers inside of Excel and you can format the numbers pretty easily. Over in column B here, I'm gonna highlight all the numbers and I'm going to go up here to the number submenu. So I'm gonna click on this little down arrow key and I'll see there's a whole bunch of formatting for numbers that come up. I can do general, number, currency. You can even update it as a date. So for example, if these numbers were gonna be a date, I could then select OK. And you'll see now they all change into a date. You can always hit Control Z or Control Z to undo. You can hit this little comma button here and that will default to an accounting version with two decimal points and then you can increase or decrease the decimals very easily with these little buttons here. Increase the decimal or decrease the decimal depending on what you would like to see. You can actually force a zero on a number in Excel. Here's how you do it. You'll see here in H6, I've got a SKU number. But if that number is supposed to be seven digits, I may want to enter a zero at the start. But if I do enter a zero at the start, it's going to disappear. It just disappears. So what do I do now? So what I'm going to do is click on that cell. I'm going to go up here to the number tab and underneath general, I'm going to scroll on down to more number formats. There's a custom category. I'm going to click on the custom category 
And then where it says type, I'm simply going to type in seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to click OK. And you'll see now there's a forced zero. It forces it to be seven characters long. Sometimes when you go to print, it may be too fat for one page. Here is my spreadsheet and I'd like to go to file, print. And when I go to file, print, it's actually two pages. The second page has a little bit of text leaking over. So what do I do here? I can actually force all this onto one page very easily. On the left hand side, you're going to see no scaling. You want to make sure that that says fit on one sheet or fit all the columns on one page. I'm going to click fit all the columns on one page and you'll see now it moves everything onto one page and now I'm ready to print. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe. Ask me a question if you like. Here's another video on how you can have some fun learning about computers.